In this video, I'm gonna share the day in the life with you of a business development rep. So if you're someone who is just starting a career in business development, or you're someone maybe looking for a job in business development, I'm gonna give you the inside scoop. And this is coming from somebody that has worked at Oracle, a Y Combinator back startup, and also have my own business and I've hired my own employees as well. So you're definitely gonna get a ton of value out of this video. Now, starting things off, what is business development? Business development is really the process of, you know, working at a company and it's your job to reach out to other companies, other people who are going to be a great fit to buy your product and service. And the first step to making this work is actually going to be sales prospecting, right? So prospecting is going to be the lead generation side of finding customers who may be a good fit for your product and service, right? This doesn't mean like doing sales pitches and meetings quite yet. It just means that you're generating a meeting to get someone interested enough to have a conversation. Based on how that conversation is going to go, the next step is actually pitching them and closing the deal. But before all of that happens, you actually need to do sales prospecting or business development prospecting to actually generate interest. Now, depending on the company you work at, there's gonna be different channels for this, right? It could be cold emailing, LinkedIn messages, or cold calling. So these are gonna be some of the most important ones, but depending on your industry, it could also be using Twitter as well, right? So people in the crypto space and the Web3 space, Twitter is really big, but it really depends on which industry you're working in. Now, if you wanna succeed in sales prospecting, the first step is actually understanding who your customer is, right? And in the biz, we call this an ideal customer profile. So it's just outlining generally who you wanna go for. It could be people working in real estate, people working in marketing, people working in technology, who do 5 million in revenue and have 100 employees and have this specific problem. The more clear and defined your ideal customer is, the more likely they are to respond to your cold emails and cold calls and things of that nature, right? So really outlining this avatar is very important because if you're going after the wrong people, no matter how good your product and service is or how good your cold email is, it's not gonna work unless you're targeting the right person. Let's say you're doing a lot of cold emails and LinkedIn messages, which is more scalable than cold calling, right? Because you can send dozens or even hundreds at a time. When you're a business development rep, you actually have to sit down and write these cold emails and these LinkedIn messages. You got to find the right people, add them on LinkedIn and send them a message, right? And when it comes to writing, you know, you have to have that skill of copywriting or you have to learn it. But what's actually interesting nowadays is you can actually use artificial intelligence to speed up the process, meaning that you can give artificial intelligence different prompts and then say, like, hey, I'm going after these kind of businesses and these are the problems they have and this is how I solve their problem with my solution. You can literally put that prompt into like some kind of AI software and it will help you write your emails, which actually brings us to the sponsor of this video, Copy AI. So Copy AI, for my opinion, is one of the best software and easy to use software you can use where they have different templates and things like that. You can kind of ask it what kind of message you want it to type and it will write it for you. Now, it's not a you know silver bullet where it's going to write something perfect and everything's going to work. You actually have to you know take what it gives you, massage it a little bit, add that human flavor, that human touch, your own personality to it, but then it will help you so much when it comes to coming up with new ideas that maybe you would have never thought of and refining your writing to make make it so much more better and convert those emails into actual meetings. So if you want to check out Copy AI, make sure to check the link in the description. And thank you again for Copy AI for making this video possible. So now that you're writing the emails, maybe you're using AI, maybe you're not, it really depends on you. I would highly recommend it because it's going to save you so much time. From there, you're going to be sending out the email. So typically the emails will go out in the morning. You use different softwares to automatically send it for you to the target customers. And so when you come into the office, you're looking at who's actually responding to your emails. And then from there, you're trying to convert those responses into meetings. Basically, you reply to the email, say, hey, here's a time on my calendar. Let me know which one works or give me some times that work for you. Depending on the company you're at, they're going to have different strategies to do this. And then from there, you just set up the meeting, right? So typically your day actually is spent doing a lot of research, building lists, writing the emails, generating meetings. And so that's a really big part of business development. From there, business development is also about taking meetings. If your role is also to take the meetings and do a discovery call or a qualification call, all that means is the first initial call is talking to the person to see whether or not it's a good fit to move on to the next stage of the sales process, which is typically going to be pitching, right? Now, as a business development rep, a lot of times you may have to do this yourself, meaning that once you generate the lead using cold email, you actually get on the phone with a potential customer and really are you doing this? Is? You're setting the expectations for the call for what's going to happen in that meeting and what the next step is gonna be. For example, if I was working at a company, I would say, hey, listen, John, like I said before, I'm part of the marketing team, really appreciate you coming on. Now for this call, I'm just trying to learn a little
little bit more about you, what you do, what some of the challenges you have, and how I might be able to help with those challenges. Now, by the end of this call, if we find that, hey, maybe there's a fit for us to work together, absolutely great. We'll move on to the next step. I want to let you know that you can tell me no at any time. Does that sound fair to you? And the other person will say, sure, sounds fair to me. So this discovery call, or this qualification call, you're not really selling. You're even telling the person, hey, if it's not a fit, just tell me, right? Let's not waste each other's time. What you're doing is you're probing for problems and you're asking questions to the customer to see whether or not that they have a problem that they will actually pay money to make go away, which, you know, your solution is the thing they're gonna pay for, right? You know, as a business development rep, when you're on these calls, you know, you're basically doing these no pressure sales call, but in a subtle way, you're you're actually using a lot of different techniques to get the person to desire your product and service, right? So I'm not a really big believer in hard selling something and forcing someone to buy something. I'm more of a believer of like positioning yourself in a way where the person just absolutely needs to buy your product and service and it's just a no-brainer. And how you do that is you get really good at having good conversations and asking questions, making the other person feel heard. And then from there, if you really agitate the pain enough, they're going to buy your product and service or actually just move into the next stage at least, right? So a lot of the job of a business development rep is to have these type of conversations, which in the business, they'll say these are sales calls. But if you kind of listen to what I'm saying, it is a sales call, but you're not really selling anything. You're just looking for the problems, which is technically a form of selling. If you're going to continue the process of business development, the next stage is actually selling or pitching. So here's how it works. First, you did prospecting, which you generated a lead. You got the first call, which is really more of a qualification discovery call to understand their problems, to see if it's a fit to move to the next stage. If it is a fit, you have typically another call where instead of you just asking questions, it's you just literally pitching them and telling them how you solve their problems that you have discovered on that qualification call. And it could be a formal pitch where you have a presentation. It could be a pitch where you're just talking over the phone. Either can work. It just depends on what works best for your industry and your specific product and service. And then you would pitch, right? And so for pitching, all you're doing is saying, look, we talked about their problems in the last call. And so for this call, what I want to do is show you exactly how we're going to solve your problems with our solution. At the end of the call, you're going to see whether or not it's a good fit to work together. If it is a good fit, great. We'll move on to the next phase, which is probably negotiations and closing. But if not, totally fine. Is that cool with you? And they're going to say, great. And then you start pitching, right? How you would do the pitch is essentially like this. Find the three main problems your customer has. From there, your whole presentation is basically saying, okay, so problem number one, you said that you want to do this, but the problem is that you couldn't do it because of X, Y, Z. Well, here's how we solve it. And then you solve the problem with your solution. Then after that, you go, okay, now that we solve problem number one, Problem number two, you said that you want to do this, but you can't do it because X, Y, Z. So here's how we solve it. And you just go down the list until you hit all of three problems. And then at the end, you just kind of give a summary of all those things. And the customer will either say, this guy or girl absolutely solves my problem. Now I just need to know the price. But if you didn't solve their problem, then it's not gonna sell from there, right? So what you're actually doing day to day is, again, it's like the style of selling, it's not really selling. You're just basically problem solving. And if you make the customer believe that you can solve their problem, and you should believe that you can solve it, then then it's an easy sell, right? And from there, once they kind of understand that you can solve their problem, it goes into negotiations, which, you know, it might take a while depending on the sales cycle, how big the deal is and things like that. But you're going to spend a lot of time negotiating and trying to make deals. And from there, you close the deal. And that's pretty much the entire sales process in the day-to-day -day life of a business development rep from sales prospecting, qualifying the lead to see if you should actually pitch them. Once you qualify them, you go ahead and pitch them and then you negotiate and then the deal is done. So if you're doing the full stack business development that's exactly what your day-to-day -day life is going to be. In the beginning, you're gonna spend a lot of time doing sales prospecting because you don't have any leads to work. But once you have some leads, you'll probably spend less time sales prospecting, but you still need to keep doing it, otherwise you'll run out of leads. And then you'll spend more time doing discovery calls, pitching, negotiations, right? So it's like this balance, but you always wanna remember, you always wanna keep the sales prospecting going because once you close those deals and you have to start over, it's a pain to have to start from zero again. So you always need consistent lead generation so you have leads to work. So that's going to be the day-to-day -day life in business development. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you want to see more sales videos like this, and I will see you in the next one.